have you reflected on your actions? It looks like you didn't come home last night, but if you feel bad for what you said, then I want you to call me. I really hope you're adult enough to accept that what you said was wrong. I'll forgive you if you swear to never say anything like that ever again. It did really humiliate me. I did come home last night. It was early in the morning, so I was considerate enough to not wake you up. I slept on the couch for an hour or two. What? You got inside? How? I thought I locked the door with the chain lock. Sorry I ruined your plans to spite me. I got in through the back door, how else? I forgot about that. But why would you come back and leave for work again without saying anything? Do you really not feel bad for saying what you did? You should be reflecting on your actions, not finding ways to avoid apologizing to me. I should be reflecting on my actions? Well, you're right. In some ways, it was wrong of me to be so critical of the dinners you make for me. I shouldn't complain, since it's better than not getting anything at all, and I do feel bad. But you have to meet me halfway here. You can't honestly think that I'm completely in the wrong, Natalie. Why should I? You're in the wrong. I've asked you so many times to stop doing that with the food, but you still do it. I had enough, so I complained, so sue me! You just want to complain about my cooking skills. Your cooking skills were fine until recently. I had nothing to complain about up until now. But one day, all of a sudden, you started putting blue cheese in everything. Every single dinner for the past few weeks has contained it in solid or dressing form. You can't seriously believe that I wouldn't complain about that, would you? It's not normal! Do you really think everything tastes good with blue cheese in it? If you don't like it, then don't eat it. Blue cheese is good for your health. It has high calcium content. That means that it's good for your bones. Don't complain when I'm only thinking about making a balanced diet for you. And you're just over-exaggerating. Of course I wouldn't put blue cheese in stuff if I didn't think it would taste good. The, the stew I made the other night tasted fine. That's a poor excuse. You were eating around the clumps. You clearly didn't want to eat it either. If it's so healthy, then you should be able to eat it with stew. And FYI, it's not balanced if it's in every meal. But because I made one complaint, you had to blow up, kick me out, and lock the door on me. Don't you think you overreacted yourself? I couldn't stand looking at your face anymore. What do you expect? I was hurt because you insulted me. Sometimes I need to have time to myself, too, you know. And after being so critical, you should have been a bit more understanding of that. So what? You didn't have to lock me out. If I didn't have my wallet, I wouldn't have been able to find a place to sleep. I would have happily spent the night on the couch if you had just told me you needed space. And I was only being honest about dinner because I've asked you to stop too many times. And I'm telling you, your brutal honesty is why I was so hurt. You're always complaining about my cooking. Go on and on about how this is wrong and that's no good, blah, 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 blah. If you hate eating the food I prepare for you that much, then why don't you leave and never come back? I don't have any complaints about your cooking. I love the food you make. All the food you were making until you became so fond of blue cheese. I've told you over and over that I've had enough of it, but you still keep adding it to our dinners in some way. Do you remember when you put blue cheese on the curry you made a while ago? I told you I didn't like blue cheese. I don't think a lot of people do, so I thought you would understand. But you just keep putting it on our food. Then I guess that means that we don't have the same taste in food. Fine. You don't have to eat anything I make anymore. I won't force you to like what I like. Make your own dinner. Why do you have to be like that? Is it so hard to not add blue cheese to the meals you make? It's not like you really like it either. What did I do to deserve this? Did I piss you off? I don't understand why you keep on doing it. So I can only assume that you're doing it on purpose, and I thought you were being cute at first, but it's happened so much it's not funny anymore. Is that so? Because I kicked you out of the house? That's part of it, but I have other reasons too. Well, I might have overdone it if I put the chain lock on the door, but to be honest, I was so annoyed that I forgot I even locked it and went to bed. It's your fault that I couldn't even enjoy my evening bath. 
I only just realized that I hadn't unlocked it when you said you slept on the couch. But you're an adult. It's not like you'd die if you spent one night on the streets, right? And you had your wallet, so you were able to spend the night somewhere. Isn't that good enough? If you complain about my cooking one more time, you'll have an even bigger problem to think about. Do you understand? I think you're the one that has a bigger problem to think about right now. You left your phone in the living room last night. Really? So what if I did? Yeah, you did. And I saw all of the notifications you had from some guy. I think his name was Thomas Reed. What's that all about? What? Did you look at my phone? I can't believe you. You invaded my privacy. Your phone kept on going off. What was I supposed to do? And it's not my fault you made messages visible on your push notifications. Why was he saying that it was a shame that he didn't get to see you yesterday? Who is this guy? You seen him? Are you cheating on me? Why does it matter who he is? It's none of your business. Don't give me that crap. It affects me. And you're my wife, so of course it's my business. Tell me the truth. You're serving me blue cheese for every meal. You locked me out of my own house. And you're cheating on me? But I'm the bad guy for asking you not to put blue cheese on my food? I suspected that you were having an affair, but I thought I was being paranoid and decided not to do anything. I wanted to trust you, but now I know about him. I can only think that you were giving me blue cheese because you wanted to annoy me. Did you think that I would divorce you and that you'd be able to live happily ever after with your lover? Shut up! He's an important person to me! Don't talk about him like that! What? Are you being serious? When we got married, I thought that I was that important person. But I guess wedding vows mean nothing to you. Yeah, he's important to me. In comparison, you mean nothing. Since what have you been dating? How long have you been cheating on me? Since way before. He's my childhood friend, he knows me more than you do, and he's a lot more fun to spend time with. All you do is complain about my food, and I can't be with you anymore. He understands me, and I understand him. We were meant to be together, but you got in the way of that. Oh, really? It sounds like you've been cheating on me for a long time. It's already been three years since we got married, and in the beginning you were making dinners like a normal human being. So I suppose this really is the reason why you won't stop giving me blue cheese. Are you trying to say that I'm not a normal human being anymore? How rude can you get? You used to be really good at cooking. I was really grateful that I would come home from work with you and a great meal waiting for me. Before I knew it, you were adding such weird stuff to our food, and I had no idea why. I wondered if you were experimenting. But now I know that it was just because you were purposefully trying to pick a fight. No, that wasn't my intention, but if it bothers you that much, you're free to leave. I'm not going to stop you. I don't plan on changing the way I cook either. I'm going to make what I like. If you want to live together, you'll just have to bear it. You're my husband. That's what you're supposed to do. If you can't do that, then there's no point being together. See? You obviously try to get rid of me. I've never heard of a husband that has to endure the torture of eating blue cheese to every meal to be with his wife. And by the way, if I'm leaving, then you'll have to leave as well. What are you talking about? This house is in my name. It belongs to me. I don't have to go anywhere. Why should I leave the house I've lived in ever since I was single? The only reason you have a roof over your head is because I let you live with me when we got married. Yeah, that may be true. But I'm the only one that's been paying the rent since we got married. If you want me out, I'll happily leave. But will you be able to pay it by yourself? I think you'll have to find a job, pronto, if you want to keep living here. You're the one that said you didn't want to work after getting married, so you've only got yourself to blame for your lack of funds. I'll be fine. I'm going to ask for permanent alimony. What? You're kidding! You don't actually think that the court will let you take anything from me, do you? We're going to divorce because you're complaining about my cooking, so of course I'll get something. I won't be able to get a job straight away. And I don't plan on remarrying just yet. 
Do you seriously think that you deserve financial support from the man you've been cheating on? And you're the one that's been telling me to leave. So, from the court's point of view, you'll be the one that owes me money. I'm shocked that you think that you have the right to ask anything of me after everything you've done. My relationship with Thomas doesn't have anything to do with you, so of course it won't have anything to do with our divorce. Even if it did, you don't have any proof that I've been cheating on you, so there's no way for you to argue that it's caused our marriage to break down. There's nothing you can do, so you might as well just give in and pay up. Now that that's decided, can you hurry up and come back for your things before I throw it all out? I want you to be out as soon as possible. I'm surprised you wanted a divorce that much. What, are you going to beg me for forgiveness now? No, I really did love you and wanted us to be together for the rest of our lives. But I guess that was just me. I'm just trying to accept the reality that you would cheat on me. Did you really want me to leave that much? So much that you pushed me away with blue cheese? That's what I've been trying to say. He's important to me. You're not, Calvin. That's why I don't want to be with you anymore. It's a shame if you can't understand it, but either way, you'll have to accept it and leave. When we first got married and we're still in our honeymoon phase, I thought that maybe you were the most important person to me. But after all of your complaining, I've had enough. Fine. I suppose there's no point arguing that I was only complaining because you started bringing out strange combinations for dinner. Are you sure you want this? For us to split up? Of course I'm sure. If you can't understand what I have with Tom, then there's no point in us being together. I don't want to be stuck in a marriage with you. Fine, I'll give you a divorce. Are you happy with that? Not quite. We'll still have to talk about money. I'll settle for everything you have saved. I know you don't have a lot, but it'll have to do. I don't want to be in debt after all. Now that would make me feel bad. You should be grateful that I'm so forgiving. But even with your minute savings, I should be able to live without any worries for a while. I think that's the best way we can settle this. I'm not paying you anything. But I'm gonna talk to a lawyer and see what I can demand from you. I'm not leaving this marriage with nothing. And how do you plan on doing that? You don't have any evidence to prove I've been cheating, so the court will just agree that I need financial support more than you do. Have you been listening to me at all? I have been listening. And I've been talking with your beloved Thomas, too. What? How did you contact him? I asked your parents if they remembered anybody called Thomas Reed from your childhood. And luckily enough, they did. They gave me his phone number. You spoke to my parents? Why would you do that? It looks like you weren't lying when you said he was a childhood friend who lived in the neighborhood. Apparently, he still lives close by. And when I told your mother that you were still in contact, she was really surprised. She was under the impression that you had already stopped talking to him way before we had gotten married. She seems curious as to why I wanted Thomas's phone number, but I think she guessed without me telling her anything. What did you say to her? How do you know that she guessed that I'm going out with Tom? Did she say anything back to you? I didn't mention you at all. I only asked for his number, but I think that was enough. Well, I'll have to tell your parents anyway when I let them know that we're getting a divorce. It doesn't matter whether she already knows or not. Don't do that. You can't do that to me. They can't know. Why not? It's the truth. What do you mean, why not? They're my parents. They don't have to know about Tom. If you tell them, you'll just be hurting them. You're the one that's hurting them. You're the one with the affair. What's the real reason why you don't want to tell them? They're going to want to know why we're getting divorced. Are you planning on lying to them as well? Yeah, I'll tell them, but not like this. Give me some time, I'll tell them. You just don't want to tell them because Thomas lives next door to your parents, with his wife and elderly parents. My mom told you all that? I'm amazed that you could do such a thing. You're having an affair with a man that has a family. And you don't even feel ashamed of it? Instead, you're trying to divert all blame from yourself and onto me. But you don't have any evidence. Why should I feel bad when there's no way for you to tell them? They'll just pass it off as you being spiteful. Thomas was panicking a lot when I told him who I was. He sensed why I was calling him and promised that he would give me anything I wanted as long as I didn't tell his wife. He offered to give me photos. 
even screenshots of your messages without me asking him. You're lying. You're just saying that's a little give up. Tom would never betray me like that. I don't believe you. It looks like you were the only one that thought your affair meant something. The most important thing to Thomas was that his wife didn't find out he was cheating. Apparently, she's pregnant and having a tough time dealing with it. So he doesn't want to stress her out right now. He seemed really desperate that she doesn't find out. But he told me that he loves me more than he loves his wife. He's supposed to not care about his wife at all. He's just saying all of that because he's working in the company his wife's parents own. I know that he loves me. He just can't say anything because he might lose his job. He'll protect me when he has to. Are you sure about that? It didn't take him long to decide what his priorities were. He sold you out the second he found out what I wanted with him. Thanks to that, I have photographs showing the both of you together, and I'll be able to use them to file for a full divorce. He cuffed up evidence without a problem, so I plan to keep my promise of not telling his wife. But I don't know what will happen if I tell your mother. She might go next door and tell Thomas's wife and parents what's happening between the two of you. You can't let that happen. Nothing good will come of that. You'll destroy a family. Please don't do that. Tom will hate me if that happens. He won't ever want to be with me ever again. I'll lose him. Tom this, Tom that. Even in this situation, you're still only thinking about yourself and him. You don't have a thought to spare for the man you married. You won't even own up to what you've done. You're the ones that are destroying the lives of those around you. If you're gonna act like that, then I have no choice. I'm gonna demand that you don't get any alimony. You can leave my stuff as it is. I'll collect it another day. I'm not coming back today. I've already found a friend who will let me stay on their couch for a few days until I find my own place. Wait, please. I'll do whatever you ask. I won't put weird stuff in your meals anymore. I won't do anything to provoke you anymore. Let's work on our marriage, so please don't do anything that will ruin Tom's relationship with his wife. I just don't want him to hate me. We're already way past that point. You cheated on me. Do you really think that it will be that easy to work on our marriage when you won't accept that you're at fault here? It's done. I've already spoken to your mother. Now all I have to do is talk to my lawyer about preventing you from taking any more of my money. Our marriage is over, and you won't be able to leech off of me anymore. And your lover probably won't want to meet you ever again. But look on the bright side. At least you won't have to put in so much effort into thinking about how to annoy me with food. After hearing about the divorce and the reason that led to it from Calvin, Natalie's mother headed straight to the Reed's house next door to speak with Thomas and his wife. Just as expected. Calvin didn't talk to Thomas's wife directly, but she ended up finding out about everything anyway. Natalie tried looking for Calvin in the hope that she could make amends, but it looked like he had already moved on from his friend's couch and found a new apartment. There was no way for her to contact him, but she received divorce papers from his lawyer who warned her that Calvin was rejecting all pleas from her for them to get back together. Natalie was finding it hard to get a job and, and couldn't pay the rent for her own apartment. She reached out to Thomas for his help, but he blamed her for his wife finding out about his affair and had blocked her on all social media. She couldn't go to her parents for help either since they were still in shock about what she had done. And because they lived right next door to Thomas. Natalie was alone and had no one to support her in her job search. She was soon feeling pressure from her landlord to pay off the rent and bills and had no choice but to borrow money. It was going to take years before she could get her life back on track. Good evening, Harvey. How are you? Good evening. I'm great, thanks. You must have had such a tough day at work today. Ah, oh, it's the usual. How about you? Did you have a good day at work? Yeah, it was great. What are you up to this evening? Do you have any plans? I've just finished work, so I was planning on going home. Have you had dinner yet? You must be hungry, right? I've only just finished work, so I haven't eaten anything. I guess I'm pretty hungry, but I'm going to make dinner when I get home anyway, so it's not unmanageable. Well, I'm free tonight. If you like, we could go out and have dinner. Do you remember the place by the station I told you about when we were on our date the other day? 
Well, I found a new French restaurant nearby. It looks lovely, and I can't wait to try it out. It's a little expensive, but I'd love to go with you. How about we try it out tonight? Sorry, we only just ate out the other day. I don't want you to take this personally. I just don't really like spending a lot of money at restaurants on such a regular basis. I already prepared my dinner last night. I needed to leave it to soak for the night, so I was kind of looking forward to eating it for dinner today. I'm really glad you invited me, but I'll have to decline. Uh-huh. You made something last night, and you're eating it again today? Do you mean that you're going to eat leftovers? Uh, no, not leftovers. I prepared some beef last night, and I wanted to let it marinate. It might sound like a long process, but the result is worth it. Oh, really? Do you always make your own dinners? Yeah, I enjoy cooking, so I'm always trying out new recipes. And I like the challenges of using up what's in my refrigerator to make dinner, rather than going out to eat or buying some stuff. Food keeping is more efficient that way too, less waste and all. Anyway, when do you want to go eat at that new French restaurant? I hear their duck foie gras is delicious. You want to eat the duck foie gras, right. Yes, I'd love to. Let's pick a day. I've been looking forward to eating there ever since I found out. Well, I'm afraid I'm still not sure what my plans will be for work next week. And appointments come flying in at last minute, so I can't promise anything. I don't know when I'll have time to go out. Even though I'm saying I really want to go, I'd like to go sometime this week. I'm sure you can make some time for me. You don't want to disappoint me, do you? You want to go this week? That French restaurant is expensive, isn't it? Considering the ingredient used, the meal you specified is bound to cost a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, I think it was around that much. What about it? Is there a problem? It's not too expensive for you, is it? I haven't gotten my pay yet this month, so I'd prefer to go somewhere a bit more affordable. Like I said earlier, I don't really like spending a lot of money eating out. I'd be really grateful if you could respect that. I know a great tavern that's really cozy. We could go there. Are you serious? You're being stingy. You did not just invite me to eat dinner at a tavern. What do you mean I'm not being stingy? I just like to spend my money wisely when it comes to food. I can't believe you actually just said that. You eat at taverns? And you think that you're spending money wisely? Harvey, you said you're 35, right? You're 35, but you still don't have enough money to spare to take a girl on a date to a French restaurant before payday. Clearly, that's because you haven't been spending your money on stuff that's worth it up until now. So you want me to pay for the entire meal again, don't you? This is why I was trying to hint that I wasn't interested. What do you mean, again? You paid for dinner last time because that's what guys should do. And you'll pay next time too because you'll still be a guy. If you don't understand something as simple as that, then that's why nobody wants to marry you. Maybe you should read How to Be a Gentleman for Dummies before we have our next date. How can you be so stingy over paying for a few hundred dollars for a meal at a French restaurant? Every other guy in the world would be happy to pay that much. I had such high expectations for you, but now I'm really disappointed. I can't believe you turned out to be such a Scrooge. You're a waste of my time and a piece of crap for denying me one lousy dinner at a French restaurant. Sorry I couldn't match up to your impossibly high expectations. I should have realized that you were no good when we went to that Italian restaurant on our date the other day. I was glad that you agreed to the restaurant that I wanted to go to. But you chose the cheapest course, didn't you? I checked the price on the website when I went home that night. It was the second to last option on the menu. It's a universal rule that restaurants put their cheapest options at the bottom of the menu. Why would you do something that cheap on our first date? Huh? 
but you didn't even eat that course, so what's the problem? The second we sat down at our table and heard the waiter explain the course, you told me that you couldn't eat a lot, and asked me to change the option to a smaller but more expensive course. I had already made reservations, so I had to pay extra for the course that you asked for. Oh, you're just making excuses and being cheap. What's the big problem? So what if you paid extra? Do you really think that you can find someone who'll marry you if you say stuff like that? You want to marry me, don't you? But at this rate, I don't think I'm hooked. My impression of you is only getting worse and worse. You'll have to do a bit better than that or you'll lose all chances of getting married. Ever. So let me give you a hint. You should never invite a woman to eat at a tavern ever again. That kind of place is for poor people. Why does it matter whether someone eats at a tavern or not? If it tastes good and I like the atmosphere, who cares how much the food costs? That's not the problem. The problem is, is that I deserve more than just a dinner at a tavern. You can't make me eat somewhere so common. Do you understand how embarrassing it would be for me if someone caught me eating in a place like that? I graduated from a famous private college and I'm working in a major company as a private secretary. I'm the best at what I do, and want me to leave my career to be a housewife for you, you'll have to provide more than that. You need to put effort into making me feel like a princess, do you understand? No, I don't understand. And I didn't know that you were so obsessed with wealth and with how other people see you. To be honest, I'm glad I found out before it was too late. You may have chosen to go out with me because I look cute, but you should know that I'm not just a pretty face. I have a wonderful character, too. But what about you? You're 35, you're not that bad looking, I guess. You can pass as average. But you're cheap and you like to nitpick about where you eat and you like to cook. With your salary, you should have a maid for that. But no, you do it all yourself. What are you, an old woman? I was shocked when you told me that you didn't want to go out to eat before your payday, too. You should have enough money saved up now to go eat whenever you want. Why do you have a problem with spending money? I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd react to this badly to how I spend my money and my free time. If you think that badly of me, then maybe we shouldn't talk to each other anymore. I'm not interested in going out to eat food with someone who'll insult me for how much I pay anyway. I want to enjoy my meals with someone, not impress them with a more expensive meal in a fancy restaurant. Are you rejecting me? You've wasted so much of my time and you're just going to give up on dating me? You can't do that. Well, I didn't mean to waste your time, but if that's what you think I've done, then maybe there's no saving this, or whatever this is. You're unbelievable. You don't understand how I feel at all. Can't you be a bit more sympathetic? I'm sorry about that. On top of that, you were saying at a speed dating party that you earn $100,000. Was all that a lie? Did you just deceive me so that you could date me? No, I didn't deceive you in particular. To be precise, I didn't earn a hundred thousand, but... I knew it, you liar! I'm going to sue the host of that party. You should be more careful about who they allow to attend. I'll make sure you can never participate in another party like that ever again. And without speed dating, you'll never find someone to marry you. A liar like you doesn't deserve a second chance. If you're already 35 and haven't already got a girlfriend, then you might as well give up. There's no hope for you. Nobody will ever want to be with you anyway. <laughs> That's your punishment for wasting my time. You only get what you deserve. You say that I wasted your time, but we only had one date together after the speed dating event. And it's not like we spent a lot of time together that night either. We went out to eat at that Italian place and went home afterwards. You're talking as though we've been dating for weeks. Plus, you're the one to talk when it comes to age. You are older than me, aren't you? I can't believe you'd ask a girl how old she is. You're the most horrible person ever. I get it that you're not a gentleman, but, but don't you have any manners? A girl? <laughs> if you think that I'm old, then I think I have the right to argue that you're too old to consider yourself a girl. You said you were working at the Morris Corporation, right? I think you said that you were a private secretary? Yeah, so what? What does that have to do with anything? I happen to know the senior vice president of that company. 
I got the chance to meet up and talk with him the day before yesterday. I heard some really interesting stuff. What? How on earth do you know him? Where could someone like you possibly have met him? He informed me that there was no private secretary called Isabel Smith working there. What does that mean? You went on and on about me lying to you about my salary, but you lied to me about what your position is. I'm not officially called a private secretary, but I do things that a private secretary is required to do. He can't have forgotten about me. You say that, but what kind of stuff do you do? You don't seem to have made a great impression on your VP. Well, for your information, I check schedules and prepare coffee for the people in the department. What else would a private secretary do? Really? <laughs> I guess that's all you can be entrusted to do. What's so funny? Nothing. I just thought that it's interesting that you're doing stuff that's usually left to the newbies. I would have expected a private secretary to be more involved and carry out more personal tasks that need more attention to detail than remembering how many sugars your employee wants in his coffee. Are you looking down on my work? Don't be so rude. I'm proud of what I do. It may seem unimportant to you, but it actually makes a lot of difference. I don't deny that even the simplest and smallest jobs are all part of the bigger picture, but if that's all you do, then I have some doubt about whether you're the best. I asked him about you. Uh-huh. What did he say? He told me that he had heard a lot about you from your colleagues. Seriously? Has he been asking my colleagues about me? I wonder if he wants to go out with me. What else did he say? He says that you stand out a lot. He mentioned how you wear really flashy clothes, despite only ever working in the office. Yeah, well, I take care of the way I look. I'm always aiming to be my number one self. Since I'm so pretty, I guess that means the guys can't keep their eyes off of me. He also told me that you used to be pretty, but now, because of the way you dress, even if you were in the sales department, it would be too embarrassing for the company to send you out to visit clients if you were dressed like that. He said that he thought you needed to be more aware of your own age. That's pretty much what you said to me, so how does it feel to have your poison spat back at you? What? He said that I'm embarrassing? Why would he say that? I thought you said he was interested in me. I never said that, you just assumed. Anyway, I was really surprised when I heard this, but I found out that you entered the company in the same year as the VP. You entered the company after graduating college, and if you've been working the same number of years as him, then... What about it? If that's the case, then it doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? Can you get to the point? Your age, or the age you announced you were at the speed dating party. You told me that you were 38. But the funny thing is, the senior vice president told me he was 45 just the other day. You were lying about your age, weren't you? He's just misremembering things. He didn't enter right after college. He was... Yeah, he told me that he went abroad for two years after college before entering the company. But even then, that means he's been working at Morris for 22 years. You entered at 21, so plus 22 equals the sad truth you tried to hide. How dare you try to calculate a girl's age? Just how insensitive are you? You're not a girl anymore. If you at least owned your age, I would have had more respect for you. But instead, you just insulted me about my age and my spending habits. Even though every word would boomerang back to you. At first, you seemed nice, funny, and even smart. I wouldn't have cared if you had lied about your age because I would have understood that it had really bothered you. I wanted to talk with you more, but you just lashed out at me for not taking you to a French restaurant. You didn't even thank me for paying for the meal. And more the last time we ate, so I don't think I'm interested anymore. Let's forget this ever happened and go our separate ways. That's my line. I don't want to date a man that lies about his salary. If you don't have enough money to keep up with my needs, then I would have dumped you someday anyways. 
But you really wasted my time. It's true that I didn't write the exact amount that I make, but that doesn't mean that I make less than what I said. I actually make more. But I don't like bragging, and I just thought that any interactions I had at that party would be artificial if I was honest. So I took it down a few notches. I wanted to avoid women like you, but I guess I got caught anyway. Huh? What are you talking about? I thought you were just a normal office worker. Yeah, I did say that, but it's not like my position makes me any better than an office worker anyway. I didn't see the point in clarifying, but just for the sake of rubbing it in your face, I actually own a company. It's just a venture, so it's not that big, but for the past few years our numbers have been going up, so we've made quite a profit. I've been investing in property too, so I earn way more than the 100k I told you about. Unfortunately for you, I used to be poor, so I can't get out of the habit of being careful with how I spend my money even though I have plenty to spare. I've been putting most of my earnings into a savings account, and I just withdraw a fraction of the total to use the bills and groceries. And I just withdraw a fraction of the total to use for bills and groceries. I honestly enjoy cooking, so I still prefer to make my own dinners rather than eat expensive meals at restaurants. I thought you were just being cheap. I never knew you had a reason like that. I spend money on stuff I need to, like my house, suits, and my car. But I don't see the point in spending money on stuff I don't need to. I don't think it's worth wasting my money on someone I have no intention of marrying to. Like a dinner at a French restaurant, for example. You were deceiving me? Well, luckily for you, I'm willing to forgive you. I'll go with you to that tavern you were talking about if you really insist. I'll let everything you've said up until now slide. What? I'm the one that's being forgiven. How merciful of you. And no, I don't insist. In fact, I insist that you never call me ever again. What? Why? I've forgiven you for what you said. I'll let you take me to that place you said you wanted to go. You're only saying all that because now you know that I own a company and make a lot of money. You're the exact type of woman I wanted to avoid at that party. That's why I lied about my salary. You were disgusted by the idea of eating at a tavern because it was beneath you. You only care about status and yourself, not me. I broke up with my girlfriend a few months back and I had finally regained a positive image of getting married. But I never thought that I would be insulted this much by a woman I only had one date with. I don't think I'll be going to any more speed dating parties. But I think I've done every other part as a bunt of favor by telling the host that you were lying about your job and your age. What? You can't be serious. I also warned them that you were verbally abusive and that your behavior was inappropriate for a grown adult. They've assured me that your application will be removed and your name will be put on the blacklist. I hope that this way you won't bother anybody else with the same crap. What are you talking about? Wait a second, please. I've already been kicked out of several other speed dating events. I can't lose any more chances to find someone that will marry me. You can't do this. Please don't leave me. I think we'll be really compatible for each other. Why don't we start over? Start over? There's nothing between us to start over. You ruined things before they had even begun. <laughs> but I do pity you. I hope that you'll be able to reflect on your actions and... Find someone who you can respect and treat a lot better than you treated me. First, you'll have to get over yourself, old woman. Thanks to Harvey reporting Isabel to the host of the event, she was banned from participating in any other events with the same matchmakers. The senior vice president's comments about her appearance must have bothered her a lot because she had begun to take more care with her clothes and the way she acted around her colleagues. She was wearing less vibrant and patterned clothing and had become more and more monotone. Apparently, her existence had become more and more dull and invisible. Seems that she's putting a lot of effort into her online profiles on matching and dating apps, but considering her standards and her personality, it looks like she's having a lot of trouble finding someone who earns $100,000 annually. As for Harvey, he settled down at the next woman he met who was also fond of cooking and enjoyed eating out at places that were friendly and comfortable together rather than stiff black tie restaurants. His business is on the rise and he's looking forward to when his son or daughter will be born. All right, so I'm counting on you starting today. Uh huh? 
What are you counting on me for? I told you, starting today I'm going to be going back to work because I didn't have any more days off from labor. Did you forget? Oh, yeah, you did say that. But what does that have anything to do with me? Huh? I asked you to take care of my kid. I remember specifically asking for your help. I told you no, though. I'll tell you again. No. I have kids of my own, too. You can't just say no now. I have to go into work for real tomorrow. I'm only going to say hello and check in for today and I'll come back, but... Wait, you're not telling me you haven't quit your part-time job yet, right? I'm not going to quit. I told you that I wouldn't be quitting my part-time job. Then how the hell are you going to look after my adorable twins? I told you I can't. I have a part-time job and I have two kids of my own. So what? Your kids are both old, middle school and high school. They barely require any help from you. No one cares about them. I definitely care about them. And not to mention they're both very active in sports. I'm really busy right now moving them around. I also have my part-time job for the 10th time. Part-time work is just like playtime anyway. Just quit that silly job of yours. And come take care of my kids at no cost, okay? I can't do that. You want me to look after your infants and take care of the house for free, right? That's what you're asking for? I don't have the leisure to do that kind of thing for you. Um, just so you understand, Ms. Part-Time, you might not be able to comprehend because of your tiny little brain, but my job has a lot of responsibility, unlike you. Also, I was pregnant for the first time at 40, and they're twins to make things more difficult. Your brother went overseas for his work. He won't be back for another half a year. You don't want to help out your poor old sister-in-law? Well, then you better get a move on and find a daycare. Even more so if you really want to go back to work. It's not that I want to go back to work. I'm going to go back to work by tomorrow morning. So I can't be having this discussion with you right now. Okay, then you better start looking right now. At least try to find a babysitter or something. That's why I'm asking you. Why don't you pay someone professional? Someone who's certified to take care of your kids. I don't have any more money. Fertility treatments cost a lot of money, you know. Then you should ask your own siblings. You have sisters, right? Their kids should also be fairly old now, so they shouldn't have any issues there. I don't want to cause any problems with my actual sisters. You guys all live close by anyway. You're basically obligated to help me. Didn't James tell you anything? Sure, he talked to me about it. I also turned his offer down too. Why the hell did you do that? Your kids won't be going to college anyway. There's no reason for you, the wife, to be working anyway. It doesn't matter if you quit at all. So just quit that job and come take care of my kids. You're seriously talking crazy right now. Besides, let's do a little review. You have two boys at your house. I have all girls. I can't really feel safe about that, can I? I'm going to have them stay at your parents' house. Wait, did I read that right? You said my parents' house? Yeah, my parents' house is too far from here. My mom isn't around and my father needs to be looked after. I don't have any other choice but to have them looked after at your house. If you take care of them there, it all works out perfectly. I want you to let them eat at least three meals a day at your parents' house. I work late often, so it really helps. What? I never agreed to any of that crap. My mother is also sick right now, so she can't deal with your kids. I need to take her to the hospital still. You need to stop talking about all this nonsense and start looking for a babysitter or a daycare. It's going to work out a lot better for you. What time are you going? Huh? To the hospital. I'm already headed there now. Lydia? Miss Lydia? What the hell? You ran off after leaving the kids at my parents' house? What is wrong with you? I told you I have to go to the office starting this morning. I didn't really have a choice. I'll go pick them up this afternoon. That's not the problem here. My mother and I are at the hospital right now, so we can't go home. My father is completely confused as to what he should be doing and what's going on. You need to cut your shit out. You left your kids at my parents' house, claiming you should be glad that I'm letting you see your grandkids. How rude can you be? Just so you know, I don't mind if you guys buy them clothes or toys. You can just keep them at your parents' house. I'm going to leave them at your parents' house every day anyway. I'll be okay on the weekends, but when I have to go away on business trips, make sure it's okay for them to stay overnight. And just to be extra crystal clear, do not let them have any interaction with those boys of yours, alright? 
Are we good? Hey, I didn't say yes to any of this. You don't have a choice. I'm going to work now. See ya. All right, I just swung by the office for today, so I'm all done. I'll be heading over there to pick them up now. They're not here. Uh-huh, what do you mean they're not here? My father was at his wit's end, so after that, I had them picked up by your sisters. I called them as soon as you left. What? You're joking, right? Your sister that lives with your father at his place came by to pick them up real quick. My older sister? Yeah. I don't believe it. You messaged her without telling me? I didn't realize. I didn't think that you were that kind of person that would lack common sense like that. My sister and I haven't been on speaking terms for a long time, and then you go and give her my kids? You shut up about common sense. You need to stop. Your sister, she was apologizing nonstop to me. I'm so sorry for my younger sister's rudeness. I think she said that's the normal common sense, I think. My dad also had a rise in his blood pressure. He got sick and collapsed. What the hell have you done? Raise your own damn kids. You made my older sister apologize? And where are my kids? Give me back my kids! How about you message your older sister and ask yourself? You know I can't do that. Yeah, I do know, actually. You left your own father's home because you didn't want to take care of him. You moved all the way over here to avoid him, right? That's not true. Also, I'm going to go out on a limb here. You didn't know that there was a daycare specifically for employees at your workspace. Uh, how did you... You spoke to my father, right? You said that it was too expensive for you to use. If you have money to spend on your own stupid clothing and expensive purses, maybe you should spend some money on your kids. What are you talking about? Oh, come on. It takes two seconds to figure out that you're in love with Chanel. It's not some kind of great big mystery. Also, I spoke to my brother. My father's pretty damn pissed. What did you tell him? Oh, about today. He said that he doesn't want you in his property ever again. He also said that if he ever sees you on his property again, he will cut ties with you, your kids, and my brother. He's just bluffing. Oh, and your older sister apparently agreed with everything too, just so you know. My older sister? Yeah, the one and only. I know that you need help because you had twins at a relatively older age, but maybe you should have considered, I don't know, talking to people around you for help other than just pushing your kids onto them. Where are my babies? Also, let's go back to the Chanel thing for a second. Apparently, my brother didn't know anything about it. You told James about it? I didn't, but my father did. He was pretty surprised. You and your family, you're seriously screwing everything up for me. If you don't give my kids back, I'm going to sue you for abduction. I'm literally telling you where they are. Just call your sister. They're at your parents' house. Also, going forward, don't ever have any interaction with me or mine again. Then who's going to take care of them? I don't know. Figure it out. If you want me to look after them, then you better be willing to pay. At least the same amount as my part-time job. Also, I don't want to cause any undue stress to my father, so don't go to my parents' house ever again. I'm sorry about this time, but can you please get my kids back from my older sister? What? What are you saying? Please, I really don't want to see my older sister. I'm sorry about this. I don't care. You talk down about my kids, just so you know, those kids you made fun of, they're the ones most concerned about your kids. Maybe you should learn from them. Take care of your own kids. Whatever, if you come back to my parents' house, I'll call the police. I told your older sister as well. Don't ever come again. Lydia ended up calling her older sister even though she didn't want to. She did go pick up her kids from her father's house. She didn't even tell them about the fact that she had kids. She was scolded till her ears bled. They said that if she wasn't willing to responsibly raise the kids, they would take custody of them. She couldn't take off from work more than she already had, so she used up her PTO as much as she could, but it left a heavy impact on her chance of promotions and pay raises. If only she didn't spend so much money on her stuff, then maybe, just maybe, she would have had some money left to be looked after at a daycare, or even asking Carolyn for help with looking after them. Her husband James didn't help either. At the end, he contributed nothing. 
Carolyn's parents don't talk to Lydia at all anymore. In the end, Lydia was way too selfish. Ended up pushing away all the help she could have got around her. Do you have a sink? What's up? You're already done with work today? You're out early. I had to go to my parents' house today. Huh? Your parents' house? What about your job? I left work early. I still have a little left before I can wrap up at my work. I asked Mom to pick up Elizabeth, so if you were going to finish work early, I wish you had told me so I could have just had you pick her up. Like I give a shit. It's your fault for not telling me beforehand. I didn't know that you were getting off work early. Whatever. Anyway, I told you about my sister's kid, right? Huh? Oh, you're talking about Dan? I thought that your parents were going to look after him, considering your sister took off. Why? What's up with Dan? Yeah, okay, so you know about him. I know that they took him in because they divorced, because she basically said, never mind, I don't want him anymore, and left. That made me really mad towards my sister. My parents are already pretty old, you know? I think they're struggling pretty bad. It's raising a three-year-old after all. Right, I understand. I hope that they're able to find your sister soon. We don't have any clues? Did they try reaching out to her ex-husband? I think they're trying, but they can't actually get in touch with him. I see. But you have your own kid too. I think that your sister will come back real soon. There's no way that your sister can just leave her kid like that forever. So about that, I feel bad for Dan. Mom seems to be really struggling too. So I've decided that we will be taking him in. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I said I've decided to take him in. I just went over to their house to pick up Dan. I'll be waiting at home for you. Starting today, we're going to be living with the four of us. I'm sure you understand. No, no, no. Hang on a second. What do you mean, I hope you'll understand? You realize that we still have Elizabeth, right? She's weak right now, too. She has to go to the hospital regularly. I work to make more money, too. You understand how tough it is with one child. You're going to abandon Dan? Don't get me wrong. I feel bad about Dan. But no offense, Dan can be pretty violent. I remember when he has his little rage fits. When we took Elizabeth to your parents' house one time, he hit her and injured her. You remember that, right? They're over a year different in age. I'm worried, so I don't want to just leave them together. You're such a ruthless asshole. You're not thinking about Dan at all, are you? There is no real difference between a two-year-old and a three-year-old. You just let him go to sleep and it's fine. They'll get along real fast. Besides, Dan seems to have taken a liking to you. He misses his own mom. That's why he loves me because I'm around the right age. Then he takes it out on Elizabeth. Whatever, I'm just telling you now clearly, no. I'm finishing up work now, so I'm heading home, but please do not bring Dan to our house. First, we need to talk about this with each other face to face. I'm almost at the house. Dan is with me right now. Why would you do such a selfish thing? I can't do that. I cannot look after someone else's child who is a threat to my own child. Besides, I have a job that I need to do as well. It's not like I'm a live-at-home mom. I'm busy with my own job and my kid. I'm already struggling pretty badly juggling the two. There's no way I can handle another child. What kind of devil are you? What? You call my own sister's child some other person's child? You need to think about how Dan feels about everything. Are you just gonna make my mom handle everything? You realize that he's three years old. Imagine him growing up with a two-year-old Elizabeth. 
it's definitely gonna be beneficial to her too. How can you not look after two kids? That's literally what parents are supposed to do. You should figure it out, it's easy for you. If you wanna talk about it that passionately, you're going to be taking care of Dan yourself, right? You're not going to just leave it all up to me? What, me? Yes, you, it's your adorable nephew. That means that you'll be looking after him yourself, right? Why the hell would I be looking after him? There's no chance that I will be doing that. You take care of things around the house. You're the wife. That's how things are supposed to be. Don't try to rely on me. Stop being a spoiled brat. What are you going to do when you can't even rear a child? A kid just sleeps or eats anyway. You already do that with Elizabeth. Just adding another person isn't going to make that big of a difference, is it? I understand now. You've never taken care of Elizabeth. That's why you don't know how tough this is. You think that you're going to get away with talking to your husband like that? I work late more often than you. I'm usually coming home later from work more than you, too. But you never take care of Elizabeth at all until I go pick up Elizabeth from daycare. You're just sitting at your parents' house. So what? That's how everything is supposed to be. Be honest with me. You're planning on just dumping down on me, right? Of course. It's better for a woman to look after the kid. Dad is a little wild. Mom and Dad are both struggling with it. The best thing right now is for you to raise him. Why don't you understand? If you don't agree with me, we're gonna get a divorce. You need to seriously rethink that horrible logic of yours. Hurry up and come home to Dad and I. Cook us both some dinner. If you can't do that for me, we're getting a divorce. Okay. Okay, I'm glad you understand. Stop your bitching and moaning. If you can do something about it, do something about it. If that's what you want, then I agree to getting a divorce with you. Huh? What are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? No, I haven't lost my mind. That's what you were asking for a second ago. If I don't take care of Dan, then you want to get a divorce with me. I cannot accept your offer to take care of Dan like that. And let's be honest here, you just want to look good in front of your parents, right? Why do I have to sacrifice my own happiness and my child's happiness just because you want to play good boy in front of your parents? Are you seriously asking for a divorce right now? Stop talking trash like that. Because you're all emotional right now. Just come home already. Dad and I are starving. Seriously, cut it out. You realize that I'm the one that wants you to cut it out, right? <laughs> After Elizabeth was born, you never put any money into our savings account. That's why I'm over here working tooth and nail. But you never take care of raising our child. So my parents always end up taking care of Elizabeth. That's why I came to the realization the other day. Both Elizabeth and I are perfectly fine and content living without you in our lives. Uh, you really thought about that? You're just joking, right? You weren't like this when we were still going out and before Elizabeth was born. I don't know what happened or what got into you, but you stopped putting money towards our savings. I already told you why. My boss, when I was away on a business trip, told me that he never put any money into his family savings. When he continued to do that, his wife ended up becoming independent, and they were able to have a nice family household with a good balance. That's why I figured. That you were going to copy him, right? But as a result, what happened to that boss? Remind me. He divorced last year. I guess you couldn't predict that, huh? Really takes rocket science to figure out where this is going. Okay, I get it. I'll start putting money into the family savings. It's not like I didn't want to put money into the savings. Just hurry up and come home already. I'm not going home anymore. Huh? I'm going to my parents' home. I have them taking care of Elizabeth right now, so it was perfect anyways. I'm just going to stay the night at their place. I'm going to have my brother pick up all of our stuff later on. I don't want to see you or Dan. 
Don't be so weird. Just hurry up and get home. Dan is starting to throw a ruckus. Because he's getting hungry. But what should I do? I don't know. <laughs> You're the one that agreed to take him in. How about you figure it out? How the hell am I supposed to figure it out? I'm a man. I don't know these things. I don't think that excuse works in this day and age. I don't think it ever actually made sense. He's your relative too. You should take care of him soon. I'll even help out a little bit around the house from now on. You're really talking down to me, but if, if we get a divorce, all my ties with Dan will be cut. We're literally not going to be relatives anymore. Are you serious about the divorce thing? We've been doing so well up until now. Um, how? <laughs> if anything, I've been working hard for myself and this house. I take care of Elizabeth all alone. But I had to cook crap and make bento for you. If anything, getting a divorce is much better for me. It'll make my life easier. I'll get a lot of government assistance and I can get child support from you too. Child support? Are you gonna take my money even after we get a divorce? It's not like you put any money into the house up until this point. I hope you work hard for Elizabeth from now on. Okay, fine. I'll put more money into our joint family savings account. I'll help out raising the kids a little bit. So please, just come home for now. Dan is crying and he won't listen to me at all. I'm not going home. This is all your fault. You thought that I would just fold and take care of it. It's your own fault for being irresponsible. I'm sorry. Please save me. What do I do? Pete's me. I've asked you for your help countless times. This is what you get for ignoring me every single time. <laughs> Good luck living alone from now on. Living and raising your child, too. Have fun living with your sister's child. Lucy had decided that this was a good time as any to get a divorce. After talking to her parents, her sister, and her younger brother about it, they all acted surprised as to why they didn't get a divorce up until now. Jack didn't want a divorce and even tried to hire a lawyer. He tried to fight it, but in the end, the fact that he wasn't putting away any money into the family savings account, combined with the fact that he never helped raise Elizabeth, made all the lawyers he contacted turn down his case. As he said that he would take on Dan, he couldn't just say never mind and give him back to his parents. So he had to look after Dan while going to work. Dan would keep causing problems at daycare too. Apparently he kept getting called out of work which made him lose trust within his own company, but he still had to pay child support. So he's been trying to keep his job, but he realized how hard Lucy's job was and deeply regrets treating her the way he did.